The last learning objective is explain the toxicodynamics of vancomycin based on serum trough and AUC. There are a lot of studies that have looked at the correlation between vancomycin trough and toxicity, specifically nephrotoxicity. So here on the horizontal axis, we're looking at different uh, levels of trough. So less than 10, trough of 10 to 15, trough of 15 to 20, and trough greater than 20. And then on the uh, vertical axis we're looking at the rates of nephrotoxicity so you can see that uh, basically not much difference if the trough is less than 10 or 10 to 15 however when the trough starts to go above 15 you start to see increased the risk of nephrotoxicity uh, which is uh, highest when the level is greater than 20 so because the risk is greatest above 20 um, you know you should never have um, a trough of greater than 20 unless the patient is on continuous infusion uh, these troughs are only uh, pertinent to intermittent dosing so these numbers don't apply to continuous infusion and of course even 15 to 20 is still more nephrotoxic than uh, 10 to 15 so more reason to avoid targeting uh, 15 to 20. Now this is a systematic review and meta-analysis from multiple studies and they're looking again this, at the same uh, same groups uh, you know trough less than 10, trough 10 to 15, 15 to 20 and greater than 20 and in the meta-analysis specifically they compared trough of 15 or higher versus anything that's less than 15 to see if it uh, makes a difference and so these are all the different studies that they have um, added to this meta-analysis and then the sum of all of these studies shows that there is a significant increase in odds of nephrotoxicity with a trough of greater than 15 or greater than or equal to 15 compared to trough of less than 15. So, you know, more and more evidence suggests that trough of 15 or higher is actually nephrotoxic. And there are many... Uh, risk factors for nephrotoxicity. You know, there are a lot of studies done and they found that if the total vancomycin daily dose is more than 4 grams or 4,000 milligram, the patients are more likely to have nephrotoxicity. If vancomycin trough is uh, greater than 15, which I just uh, showed you, uh, also if the vancomycin AUC is greater than 700, that's also uh, nephrotoxic and that's why the new guidelines are targeting an AUC of 400 to 600 because they don't want you to reach uh, 700. Uh, also if the therapy exceeds six days so you know if someone is on vancomycin for just a few days for uh, empirically uh, and then uh, you discontinue it they're less likely to have uh, nephrotoxicities when patients have longer uh, periods of time uh, that uh, they're more likely to have nephrotoxicity. Also, uh, concurrent use of other nephrotoxic agents such as aminoglycosides and piperacillin tazobactam and also some antifungals like amphotericin B, they can be, uh, you know, along with, uh, you know, sometimes patients are uh, on uh, NSAIDs, for example, that, that can cause, uh, uh, that can be nephrotoxic. Patients who have pre-existing renal disease and that's defined as serum creatinine at baseline of uh, 1.7 or higher, often or if their creatine crans was less than 86.6. So these are uh, risk factors. Obesity was also a risk factor, um, and that's defined as a total body weight of 101. The way they came up with these numbers, basically they've done um, logistic regression, and that's how they have come up with these numbers. They found statistically significant correlation between these and uh, nephrotoxicity. Uh, the next one is hypotensive episodes. So for example, someone who who actually developed shock as a result of the infection they were more likely to uh, develop nephrotoxicity that could be in part due to uh, you know shock results in hypoperfusion of the kidneys so if the kidneys are not getting um, perfused uh, uh, adequately they're more likely to uh, to see damage and lastly increasing uh, severity of illness so patients who are more ill are more likely to develop nephrotoxicity. So the longer someone is in the ICU, uh, the, the higher the risk of developing nephrotoxicity. And lastly, since uh, you know all the pretty much the old guidelines were targeting 15 to 20 for more severe infections, and I just showed you that 15 to 20 is more nephrotoxic than 10 to 15, they want to see, well, since we're targeting 15 to 20 for more severe infections, is 15 to 20 even more likely to achieve the AUC to MIC of 400 compared to 
a trough of 10 to 15. So they did this study and they actually found that more, you know, patients who had a trough of 15 to 20, they were not more likely to have an AUC to MIC of 400. So even though their trough was higher, they were not any more likely to have that AUC to MIC off target. So, so you know, the new guidelines actually do not recommend a trough of 15 to 20 anymore. And, you know, more and more evidence shows that 15 to 20 is nephrotoxic and also 15 and 20 is not likely to result in better efficacy. So for most patients, uh, 10 to 15 is uh, sufficient and really we should be targeting AUC to MIC in our patients uh, for efficacy. This concludes this presentation.